Welcome back to Mr. Newton's Neighborhood. This is part two of Noah's Ark. Is it possible? I'm Scott Newton. I'm your host. All right, welcome back. So, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to put the articles in the description, both sides of the debate, but I'm playing by their rules of why it's possible and refuting their version of it. Hey, got to interrupt real quick before we get the show going. Um, I made an error on the last episode and I posted a correction in a video called You're Wrong and That's Okay because I was wrong and that's okay. Also, I'm going to pop up a couple times during the video and add a couple extra details that I didn't mention when I originally filmed it. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. So, as we were saying right before I ended last time, can they fit? With their 50,000 sheep calculation, that leaves us 67% of free space. They give us 67% of space for food. They say, hey, that's plenty of space. Wait. This is a year's supply of food. Is 67% of the ark enough space for a year's supply of food? Let's look at that. So we're looking at 67% of free space. That's our free space. So look at that for a minute and think, hmm, so that's enough room for your rotten food for a year? Each individual would have about three times the size of their body for food for a year. The average American eats almost a ton of food a year. But we're pigs, so we're not going to go by the average American. We're disgusting. So we'll average that out. And we're going to use a very conservative 200 pounds per creature for a year. 200 times 50,000 is 10 million pounds. That's probably not quite accurate, but that's just to give you an idea of how much the food is going to weigh. 10 million pounds. Or give or take, the point is it's going to take up a lot of space and a lot of weight not to mention the weight of the cargo. And what about the water? Well, even though God didn't give Noah instructions to have some water filtered in or pumped in somehow while it's raining to get clean water, which would have been a good idea, we're gonna pretend that he did. So they got water for 40 days of the year. After the 40 days, you've got seawater. I mean, you can store the water. Do you know how much that is going to weigh? And speaking of food, what happens to your food just a little while after you eat it? Yep. You guessed it, you poop it out. So you've gotta have room for food, water, poop. All right, so what about the feeding and cleaning for the animals, not to mention the people? You have eight people feeding the animals and taking the poop out for 50,000 animals. And how are they gonna get rid of the poop? Are they gonna put it out that little tiny window at the top of the ark? We're gonna continue. Right, so God tells Noah, thanks for building the ark. You're doing great. Now you've got seven days and I'm gonna flood the world for 40 days and 40 nights. But we're gonna get back to that in a second. We've got to board our passengers first. How did all the animals in the world get to the boat? Another good question, Alice. Did the animals that lived on other continents build little tiny boats and float across themselves? I don't think animals can build boats. Maybe he teleported him. God, if you can teleport animals and have this kind of ability to get two of every animal from all over the world to one spot, you have the power to kill all the evil people without hurting anybody else. You could just zap them all to hell. So why flood the planet? And don't give me that symbolism crap. I mean, if you believe in the symbolism as like a parable and you don't believe in literal, okay, whatever. But if you believe it to be literal and he flooded the whole earth when he could have done something more efficient, you're gonna kill every living thing to make a point for <laughs> something symbolic. This God is a jerk. Do you think God's a jerk? And he doesn't mention the names of any animals on any other continents in the whole freaking Bible. They suspiciously only know about animals within a certain radius of where the Bible was written. They don't mention the dinosaurs, so either they were extinct before people were here, or God just didn't know about them, or Maybe they weren't important characters in the scheme of things. I mean, tsh. And come on, Daniel of the Lion's Den? What about Daniel and the Raptor Den? Now that's a story. And what about the kangaroos? Before we board all the animals onto a boat that's too small, let's make sure it's a sturdy vessel. Ark construction issues. We're going to go back to the size for just a second here. Okay, so let's look at this 500 boat next to some other boats. 
largest wood boats that actually exist, Titanic. And th these ships were made of metal, very well constructed, much more sturdy than wood. A wooden boat that size, it's gonna leak really bad. Doesn't matter if you cover it in pitch, as the Bible says, this thing is gonna bow. With the pressure of the water going on it, that's a big problem. So you've got a sinker right there just having it made out of wood. They actually admit that this is a tough problem. It's physical, it's right in front of them. They can try to duplicate this and they know it's a problem. And don't worry, they do have an explanation for it. Divine guidance, which means, I don't know, it's magic. Ooh, it's magic. <laughs> this is the kind of crap apologists say all the time. Every time they can't explain something, or the physical evidence is contrary to what they believe. Magic. Guess what time it is? It's time to bring on the flood. It's impossible to flood the world in 40 days. It's impossible to flood the world in 40 days. Where did all the land come from and where did it go? Where did it come from and where did it go? Now keep in mind that God flooded the entire earth and covered the tips of the mountains. Even with all the springs gushing up and 40 days of rain, and that has got to be some serious rain, like the kind of rain that you would have a hard time breathing. Hey, so I thought that we needed a little more details on the water. I mean, I said, where did the water come from? Where did it go? And didn't explain much. I'm going to tell you how much water this is. This is over three times the amount of water we have on the planet. So where did it come from and where did it go is a really big question. In order for the earth to get that much water in 40 days, water the would have to rise over 700 feet a day. Ah, oh, but maybe we have archaeological evidence of a flood. Geological, whatever. Nope, we don't. None. Zip, zilch, zero. Little floods, maybe, but nothing that covered the earth. But the young earth creationists do have an explanation for this. And they say that there is evidence of the world being flooded, and it is so hilarious. Please look it up and then read how things actually work. Hi, this time I'm interrupting while I'm editing. As I was editing the video, I realized it looked like I knew nothing about the possibility of a worldwide flood, and just laughed at the creationists and referred you to the links and gave you no information. I skipped this intentionally because the details can be a bit cumbersome to say the least. So I'm just going to quickly give you some of the bullet points of what the creationist's arguments are, and that'll give you an idea of why I skipped it. It gets complex. Like I said, check the link for details. Some of the claims are the vapor canopy theory, which actually has to do with the flood waters coming down itself and where they came from. And then as far as the records of a flood goes, they talk about fossils that are high above sea level as evidence rapid burial of animals and plants, non-erosion between strata, and massive quickly deposited sediment layers. Now do you see why this is a topic I skipped? It can get quite bogged down. There's quite a bit of information to Noah's Ark. There's not much information to the story itself, but the creationists and apologists have come up with a lot of justifications, all of which have been refuted. So please check the links. I give both sides. Ooh, elevation problems. Remember the tips of the mountains being covered? Well, if the tops of the highest mountains are covered, you would have a pretty high elevation. Do you know what happens at this level of elevation? You would need oxygen to survive. Not only would you need oxygen, you would freeze to death. Oh yeah, so let's go back to the water. Where did it all go? Into outer space. God sent a wind and the waters receded. Whew, I'm gonna blow on it. That'll make the water go away. Anyway, so as you know, eventually they hit a mountain. After a little while, they send a bird out. I think it was a raven and then they came back and they're like, you know what, we're gonna send a dove instead. Ravens suck. So they sent a dove, came back with nothing. And seven days later, they sent it again and it came back with an olive leaf. Takes quite a while for an olive tree to grow, actually. So to find an olive leaf, that's a little strange. Anyway, blah, 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 they're out there for over a year. So it dries out. Miraculously, they get off the boat. So what's one of the first things God has them do as soon as they get off the boat? Remember all the clean animals they put on the boat? He has him take some of the clean animals. God has Noah take some of the clean animals and clean birds and built an altar and sacrifice them. And the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse thee, because your heart's evil, or something like that. Let's recap that for a second. They have this 
big voyage. They're on this boat for a year. They're cooped up. They get out, and God's like, hey, remember those extra animals I had you pack? Grab a bunch of those and burn them for me. Mmm, that smells good. Thanks, I just wanted to smell the burning animals. concept of sacrificing animals is stupid anyway. Why does an all-powerful God need you to burn animals for him? You can say it's like, whatever, it's not necessary anymore. It was never necessary. It's dumb. It's really dumb. There's no reason for it. I mean, at least with like the collection plate and tithes and donations and all that stuff, you can build churches and things with it. You can spread the good word. But what can you do with burned animal carcass? You've wasted an animal. Why? So God can smell it? Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. I just like to smell burning flesh. You know where rainbows come from, right? God sends his rainbow as a promise. Hey, guess what? I'm going to create a rainbow now. Now there's going to be rainbows in the sky because I promise I'm not going to flood it anymore. I didn't have rainbows before because I don't understand how rainbows work. But in case you're unaware, they're basically done by refracting light through raindrops and droplets. The light goes in, bounces off the back, spreads the color spectrum. That's the simple explanation. I'm going to put a, a link of a video that explains it that's really fun in the description also if you want to see how a rainbow's made. I'm not going to get it caught up on that. Point is, God doesn't seem to know how rainbows worked. Either that or it never rained before or maybe the sun didn't exist. All right, so we're off the boat now. Now what do we do? You know. God commands his family to inbreed and populate the world, as well as having the animals inbreed and populate the world. So we've got eight people and 50,000 animals to repopulate the earth. Not quite 50,000. God wanted to smell some of them. But anyway, we've got almost 50,000 animals and eight people to repopulate the earth. And plus all the insects, that's only 4,000 years. From the story, I mean 1,600 years-ish from when it was actually written, all right, so just a quick thing on the species evolving. A lot of the people who believe the Bible to be literal don't believe in evolution, except in this point, because it's convenient. However, they clearly don't understand it. To have the kind of diversity we would have to separate everything into its kinds and have it spread into what it is now, it would take millions of years, and it did take millions of years. So 4,000 years isn't nearly enough, not to mention all of the archeological evidence that we have people actually writing at the time of the flood, so we know there were large civilizations and huge amounts of species at that time. All this shows is that young earth creationists don't know what the flip they're talking about. Mm. They must have populated it pretty quickly to fill the world with people in like no time flat. They had to have had like 500 babies a day. But at least they can eat meat now. They can eat meat. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, but wait, we're totally proven wrong. And all of these things, do you know why? Because they found the real ark. No kidding, like a whole bunch of times in different places. And every time it gets debunked. Articles on that in the description, of course. That's a whole other topic. And now that we've covered the ark, we're gonna go just a little past that and see what Noah did right after because it's hilarious. Noah immediately starts farming and then he plants a vineyard. Then what does he do? He gets drunk. Of course, he planted a vineyard, right? Make some wine, get drunk, pass out naked in your tent, which he did. And lo and behold, Ham comes along, the youngest of them, and it's like, oh, there's dad in the tent, he's naked. Ooh, I'm gonna go tell my brothers. And he goes and he tells them, hey guys, dad's in the tent and he's passed out drunk naked. <laughs> and they're like, Hey, that's messed up, man. So they go and cover him up without looking at him. Well, the story gets better than that. Noah wakes up and knows somehow that he passed out naked. I mean, if he's that drunk to pass out naked, he's probably not going to remember it, but he's like, Got blankets on me. Ham must have went and told the other boys what I did and laughed at me. That Ham, he's going to get it. So what does Noah do? He curses Ham and Ham's descendants to always be the servants of his brothers and his brother's descendants. Ah oh, man, I better curse him to be a slave forever and his family's gonna be slaves forever because he talked about me being naked in the tent. Never mind the fact that I was passed out naked. You've got family around. Why are you passing out naked in your tent? Cover yourself up. Don't drink so much, Noah. You've got a drinking problem. 
After writing this episode, I found a really funny cartoon by Dark Matter 2525. I'm going to put that in the description. It's about Noah's Ark. It's short. It's hilarious. I laughed on my bum bum right off of my butt bones. It was so funny. All right, neighbors. If you don't hate me after these two episodes, be a neighbor and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Be my neighbor. Hello, neighbor. Goodbye, neighbor. Thank mm -hmm. you.